Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Zero to Hero. Yes, welcome back to episode 22 of Zero to Hero. I'm Wes and... As the eagle-eyed viewers will see, we are no longer at FC United of Manchester. I am now managing South End United in the Skybet League 2, which means we, for the first time this series, are in the Football League. Now, I'm going to take you back to when we was at FC United and see what led to us being here. For once, I wasn't sacked. I'll have a look at the schedule. See, when you were last with me, we had just we just lost to Salford and Hartlepool, both at home, and then things started to turn around a little bit. We did lose our next game against Harrogate, two one away from home. But then we managed to draw against St Albans at home, and then another draw against FC Halifax. We then managed to pick up a win in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round against Kettering. We beat them three one away from home. Goals from Carl Lawson, Marulio and Callum Smith in that game. But we then followed that up with a 4-1 loss to AFC Fylde. Nick Clayton Phillips, who we brought back in on loan, who was with us when we first took charge of uh, FC United, he came back in on loan and scored a goal for us. He actually made his first appearance for us in the game against Kettering, where he actually won player of the match. We then managed to pick up two wins in a row, both away from home. One against Dagenham and Redbridge. Nick Clayton, Phillips and Marulio with the goals in, the, in that game. Then we beat Macclesfield, who were second in the league at that point. We beat them 4-1 away from home. Two goals from Carl Lawson, one from Marulio and a goal from Jack Blackford. We even managed to survive Marcus Wood being sent off in the 75, uh, 75th minute. It was a good game from us there, but then we managed to lose in the FA Cup first round against Eastleigh. Pozo getting himself sent off 18 minutes in, and we just couldn't recover from that. But uh, I decided that things weren't going to be weren't going to be easy at uh, FC United, and I thought maybe I'd take them as far as I could get them. Maybe it was time for a step up, and then. The South End job became available. There was a few jobs that became available and I applied for them. Um, Wickham was one of them. Doncaster was another. Dagenham and Redbridge even offered me an interview, but I declined it. I went for an interview with Wickham. I also went for an interview with Doncaster, but uh, I, oh, I preferred the South End job. It was a, a job that I had been linked with earlier in the series and I thought it would be a good chance for me to take that step up. They are, as things stand, 22nd in the Skybet League 2 on 16 points, a minus 6 goal difference. And currently in first place in that league is Yeovil on 38 points, so we're way off the top. We are only outside the relegation zone on goal difference. Lake Norian on the same amount of points as us, but a worse goal difference, as you can see. But hopefully we can propel South End up the table. We'll have a look to see where the where the South End board want me to finish this year. Yeah, so we um, our only expect expectation is to avoid relegation this season. So we can quite uh, easily, I think, avoid relegation and uh, build for next season. We're currently in November, so we're just before the January transfer window. So hopefully, I'll be able to bring in a few uh, a few new players to try and help us avoid relegation with South End. Talking of players, we're going to meet them now. Meet a few of them now. Players that uh, we've got. I mean, Mark Howard in goal, 34 year old English goalkeeper, valued at 56,000. He's got a four-star current and potential ability. Looks like a good goalkeeper. But he's somebody we'll probably be looking to replace next season. Other key players, I mean, we've got Amadou Bar, 
He is a 22-year-old Senegalese youth international. He's been capped once at under-20s. He's a striker. Likes to play as a target man. Uh, he's valued at 30,500. He's got a 3.5-star current ability and a 4-star potential ability. Looks like a pretty decent striker, but he's maybe something we could improve upon. He is our top goal scorer at the moment this season with eight goals. Maybe that's something that they've been struggling with. I mean, they look like they have a pretty young squad at the moment. I mean, we've got uh, Cameron Humphreys. I've seen him many times in uh, in Football Manager. He usually turns out to be quite a decent defender. He's got a uh, three-and-a-half-star current ability, five-star potential, and he... If he's played right and trained well, then he usually fulfills that potential. 22 years old as well, so he's got plenty of time to uh, to fulfill that potential. I mean, there aren't a lot of players that I recognise in this team other than that. Like I say, as you can see from the age age uh, column here, they do have a very, very young squad which is good because that's what I like to do. I like to bring in young players. They've got a smattering of uh, experience in there. I mean, we've got Paul Taylor, who's a 33-year-old attacking midfielder who can also play as a striker and a winger. In fact, he prefers to play as a winger. Um, he's only got a two-and-a-half star current and potential ability, so he's someone we will be definitely looking to replace in January. And also... Andrew Driver, I've seen him before. He he's a 33 year old left winger. He only has a two and a half star current and potential ability. So again, someone else we might be looking to replace in January. Now today we're also going to be playing our first match in charge of South End against Barnet away from home. They currently sit in fifth place in the league, so we'll see how we get on against them. I've not really had a chance to. Um, have a look really at the formations. I think we'll, we'll be playing with a 4-4-2 uh, for now. That's what we were using at FC United when we left. Just on a standard mentality, flexible team shape for now. Just to see if we can uh, feel out the the squad at the moment. I mean, if you, you look across the midfield and nobody's playing in their preferred positions. So we, we definitely need to strengthen in midfield. We have got a few injuries as well to key players like Sam Matthews and Yearwood and uh, Ethan Stanton, all key players for us that are going to be out for a while. I mean, he's out. Stanton's out for three to four weeks. Matthews is out for five weeks to two months. And Yearbrook's out for, for six days to two weeks. So hopefully we can get them back sooner rather than later and uh, start playing a bit better really so we're going to go with this on the standard and flexible team shape no team instructions for now so we, I'll actually introduce you to the uh, starting lineup. We've got we've gone with Howard in goal, Dixon, Wilson, Humphreys and Johnson at the back Kinsella, Barkworth, Taylor and Tilly in midfield and a front two of Barr and Butterworth I did just let my assistant pick this team based on training because it seems to be the easiest thing to do. I haven't seen how any of them play. I don't know who's in form, who's not in form. So we'll let him... He's been here longer than I have. He knows the players, so he can uh, deal with that for now. And then we'll have a look in the next few episodes at the team, see who emerges as being uh, in form. I'm hoping, although we're... Uh, quite low down I'm hoping for at least a draw in this uh, game Butterworth had a shot forcing a save out the keeper we've got the corner Butterworth blazing it over the bar Grimsby Town in seventh that's amazing I mean they're in a playoff place those of you that watched my up the Mariners save will be as surprised as I am to see them that far up the table so we're, we're 20 minutes in now we've had five shots one on target and we've got just a little bit less possession than Barnet, but we are playing away from home. I think we may go on control because we're having quite a few shots and we need to try and make them pay. 
we've just defended a corner it's gone over the bar like I said a draw would be a fair result I think for, for today's game but a win would be fantastic in my first game in charge be my first league win we are 1-0 down now Barnet with the goal 32 minutes in kind of what we expected really it was a good ball through from them and it was just poor defending poor marking from my team everyone was just ball watching really I'll have a look at some of the team instructions I think we're going to play shorter passing we're going to work the ball into the box we're going to go higher tempo as well see if that makes any difference we are struggling for fitness as well at the moment I don't know why Nobody having a particularly good game. We're at half time now, 1 0 down. We'll go straight out into the second half. Try and uh, get an early goal, second half to equalise. I mean, we've only had one shot on target in the entire game, which is bad. Not as bad as the game we had with FC United, where we had no shots on target in the entire game, though. And we're defending again. Barnet with a cross in and headed just over the bar, we were lucky really and this will move Barnet up to 4th as things stand we'll stay in 22nd only on goal difference again, if we can win we'll actually move up to 21st place and move above Wickham but uh, I, I know how unlikely that will be Johnson having a terrible game Kinsella having a terrible game at the moment as well I think we're going to be making a few changes now, 64 minutes in Kinsella, I mean, I don't really know who we've got on the bench either because I let my assistant uh, pick the pick the entire team. Who can come off? Who can come on for Kinsella? We've got Kyle James on the bench. He can come on. He's a little bit better in that position than Kinsella anyway. Also, Johnson, he needs to come off. We'll bring on. We'll bring on Sabasi for him. Although he doesn't like playing as a fullback, is he a central? Well, I tell you what, we'll we'll bring him off then. We'll we'll bring we'll put uh, Jeffries on for him. Well, again, Jeffries doesn't like playing as a fullback. But yeah, we'll bring Jeffries on, give him a chance, and we're going to bring off James Tilly because he's knackered, and we're going to bring on Neil Scott for him. Scott preferring to play as a winger, so we're gonna play him as a winger. James as well. We're gonna play him. We're gonna keep him as a, a as a wide midfielder for now. And we're gonna have a look at the team instructions. We're gonna be more expressive. We're gonna play a much higher tempo, and we're gonna close down more. And we're gonna go on to attacking. We need to try and get an equaliser in this game. Try and. Uh, at least walk away with a point in my first game in charge. Although as things stand, I think Wickham are winning, so we won't. Even if we do win, we won't. Uh, we won't move above where we are now. In saying that, we will. We will move above Cheltenham on goal difference if we win. We're 73 minutes in, still nothing from us. No highlights since the substitutions. We're now defending a free kick. And we've given away a penalty. Dixon giving away the penalty by the looks of things. Can we save it? Howard has saved it. What a save. To keep us in with a chance. 80 minutes in. We're going to go on overload now. And we're going to go on to fluid. We're going to go root, we'll go more direct passing pump the ball into the box and we're going to take more risks because I want an equaliser we've only got 8 minutes to go still nothing from us been a bit of a boring game really no, not really many chances for us to get excited about we're into stoppage time now we're defending which isn't good good header out from uh, our defenders and a shot that's just blazed wide and that's it. We've lost 1-0 against Barnet. Can't really say I was 
um, expecting a win, but a draw would have been nice. Cameron Humphrey's playing well. Our best performance by far. It's a shame. I mean, there are some positives to take out of that. We did only manage to concede one goal, but we were lacking, sorely lacking in front of goal. And in the midfield, really, there was no real creative force in that midfield. So we can see the areas where we need to improve. We are still in 22nd. We'll have a look where we're going to come back to you for the next episode. I think we'll, we'll play a few games behind the scenes. I think we'll come back just before the January transfer window. We'll come back for the Port Vale game. We'll play Port Vale and Luton in the next episode. If you like that, please give it a big thumbs up. Smash that like button for me. Please subscribe for more Football Manager 18 content. And thank you very much for watching.